that's way heavier than I expected actually, and probably not good for the MacBook Pro on the bottom. Ugh. Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I think if there's one eternal truth about tech, it's that there's always something else around the corner. But right now, I think the tech worlds have kind of aligned in such a way that it's a great time to buy a new laptop, even if everything else in the world right now doesn't seem so great. Okay, so at number one, and at the beginning of the year at CES, we get to see a glimpse of the tech that's coming. And now, fast forward a few months, it's starting to hit the shelves. Well, virtual shelves. Take this guy for example, it's the LG Gram 17, aka the world's lightest 17 inch laptop. I first saw this 2020 model with a new processor and bigger battery back in January, but now it's out, you can buy it yourself, and that's the case with pretty much every brand. We've got the new lineup of MacBooks with all new Air and Pro 13 models, Dell's new XPS 13 and 15 laptops are out now with the 17 inch coming out in June. I've also got the brand new Microsoft Surface Go 2 with me here, uh, and also the Surface Book 3 is just coming out. Plus there's new Acer Swift, Acer Zenbooks, HP Spectres, Razer Blades, gaming laptops. I could go on forever, but the point is, this is the time of year where you can now buy a lot of 2020 models of laptops. And that brings me to the second reason I think now is a great time to buy a laptop. The upgrades, the new hardware, what these 2020 models actually give us. Starting with processors, and every year there's a new Intel sticker on your laptop and it means it's slightly faster. But this year things are getting a lot more interesting for two reasons. But firstly, uh, as you can see by this shiny little silver sticker down here, we have Intel's latest 10th generation processors. And they're a significant upgrade even over last year. I don't want to get too techy talking about Ice Lake, Comet Lake, U-Series, H-Series and clock speeds. But to take one example, the new MacBook Air. And the entry level 2020 model I recently reviewed with an Intel 10th gen dual core i3 is 27% faster in my tests than last year's MacBook Air with a dual core i5. We also get much faster graphics, but I'll come back to that in a second. But as impressive as that is, I think it's actually AMD this year that's really stealing the show when it comes to processors. Their new Ryzen 4000 series of chips are incredible, broadly speaking, but these 4000 chips can often be more powerful, more efficient and cheaper than Intel's laptop processors. And so laptops like the ASUS ROG Zephyrus G14 or the new Asus Swift 3, both with new Ryzen processors, offer great performance and also really good value. But the bottom line is, regardless of whether you go for a 10th gen Intel or a 4000 series Ryzen, we're getting much faster hardware. And that can really make a difference when it comes to photo and video editing, gaming, or just, you know, having more than two Chrome tabs open at the same time. But most importantly, it means your laptop will last you longer. You won't have to worry about upgrading for quite a few years. But I think it's in the graphics department that things get even more exciting. For example, on laptops with Intel processors that have a G suffix, such as the i7-1065G7 I have in the Gram 17 here, we get Intel's fastest Iris Plus graphics, which is often around 50% faster than before. And it's a similar story with AMD's Vega graphics built into their processors, but while it's not exactly going to replace a gaming laptop, the performance is pretty impressive given it's just an integrated chip and you can get them in super thin and light form factors like this. However, if you're more of an enthusiast gamer or you're working with applications that need a proper dedicated graphics card, then Nvidia's lineup can't be beaten right now on laptops. From the GTX 1650 all the way up to the RTX 2080 Super, there's a lot of performance on offer and importantly there's something for most budgets. For example, Nvidia's brand new RTX Super range of cards that in my tests offer a 5-15% to boost in performance over the regular RTX cards. While not a huge jump, every frame helps, especially in gaming laptops that have high refresh rate displays, with the latest offering up to 300Hz. So if you want a super gaming laptop, you can now literally get one with a super graphics card. But hold up, because I think this is kind of overkill for most of us and certainly way out of our budgets. So actually what I'm more excited about is how this new hardware is basically giving us this trickle down technology so that we're getting faster, better gaming laptops for a lot less money. I mean, now we can get an RTX 2060 laptop for under a thousand pounds. So faster processors and faster graphics, they're two big reasons why now is a great time to upgrade. But it's not just about performance and specs. There's some really interesting new designs and form factors of laptops that actually kind of make you want to upgrade just based on the design alone. So this is the Microsoft Surface Go 2, which I think is officially the cutest laptop in the world. Well, technically two in one laptop. It's had a spec boost over last year, but they've also shrunk the bezel, given it a bigger 10.5 inch screen, and just made it an all-round better laptop. I love the size of this thing, and it's also reasonably affordable starting at £400. Although for a decent spec and with the keyboard, you're looking at about £700. 
Then you have the new Dell XPS series. I've got the 13 inch here, the 15 inch should be coming next week, and I love the trend towards taller 16 by 10 aspect ratios, which gives laptops a bit more vertical space, and I think makes them much nicer to use. Coming back to the LG Gram, there's 13, 14, and 17 inch models, but find me another 17 inch laptop that weighs less than three pounds. We get a massive screen, great for editing, coding, working, watching YouTube and Netflix, but in a super lightweight form factor that's really easy to carry around. Then there's dual screen laptops, which are still kind of rare, but definitely a new trend. And last year's ASUS ZenBook Pro Duo was so much fun to use. And now we have the new 2020 ZenBook Duo UX481, which is a 14 inch version with latest specs and costs about 1500 pounds. And while you may be thinking the second screen seems a bit gimmicky, for me, I found having my Premiere Pro media browser or YouTube video, Twitch or Discord on the second screen was really helpful. So that's definitely one to look out for. Another option is the iPad Pro, which together with the uh, brand new Magic Keyboard, makes this more into a laptop than ever. It is expensive and probably not for everyone, but depending what you use it for, it could be a good laptop alternative. So at this point, you may be thinking, Tom, that all sounds great, but I can't afford any of it. Well, the good news is that a lot of this tech is also trickling down to more affordable budget laptops. And as we saw with the MacBook Air, even if you're getting an i3 or Ryzen 3, if you try to get one with the newer 10th gen or AMD 4000 chips, they're going to be a lot more powerful than before. Or even if you don't care about the latest spec, but just want something cheap and cheerful, then I recently tested the Acer Aspire 3, which costs just 300 pounds. And maybe as a second laptop for the house or something for your kids to do their schoolwork on from home, it's great. So I put links to some of my favorite 2020 laptops in the description below. Hopefully you found this video helpful and maybe it's given you some ideas but let me know in the comments below what you're currently using and if you are thinking about upgrading which laptop do you have your eye on don't forget to hit that little subscribe button if you're not already sick of my face and my voice and hopefully i'll see you next time right here on the tech chat